Are you ready? Can crush us. It don't really get no better than this. The podcast that you're looking for. If you're really heavy in the wrestling, hosted by the mark. Energy that's so amazing. Gotta keep it entertaining. Rep the can crush a nation. Yeah, you know what's going down in the ring. Lights out when you hit a ding ding. Knock them out like boom, bada bing. Hold it down, you can crown me the king. Gotta shout out to the Miz and Duke the dumpster. We choke slamming everybody, power driving. Hit them with a face buster. Yeah, yeah, this the show you need an and it ain't no need for waiting. Mark, hold it down for the can crush a nation. All about wrestling and keep it entertaining. Can crushers wrestling podcast. Time to break them. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Let's go. This is Nathaniel Cunningham. And not only is Can Crushers podcast the home of the Bad Fellows, but it is also the home of High Ground Pro Wrestling. Hey! 99 bottles of beer on the wall. 99 <laughs> bottles of beer. Take, you take one, one down, you pass it around, and smash it on John Moxley's head on the wall. Ooh, nice twist. We had no idea that we were going to do that. I had no idea. Hey, essentially, it is St. Patrick's Day. So it happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patty's Day. Uh, I see you got your little, you got your green on a little bit there. I do, and I'm thinking about wearing this today, tomorrow. Yeah. Because I have my purple um, can crusher shirt to go underneath, like my suit jacket mm. and everything, so it all incorporates. Because my son helped me pick out a whole new attire to oh, wear. Oh, 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 you're gonna be really rolling. Nice. Right? Yeah. Very nice. You, you have a, listen, you have a 16 year old gay son picking out your attire to go to a wrestling event. Yeah. You listen. You're going to be fly. I think that's what the kids say. Is that what they say? Or at least they did 10 years ago. Fly for a white guy? Yeah, pretty fly for a white guy. We'll see. He even picked up new shoes and everything. When you get introduced to the, now are you going to come out to some music when you come from the background? A prom- Back it's before, not yeah. usual by Tom Jones. Yeah. No. <laughs> What's new, Pussycat? I, I was gonna say you could play, you could play Pretty Fly for a white guy as you walk out there, and rock out while you're doing it. I could also play He's a Loser, baby. I could play <laughs> Wanted Dead or Alive. I don't know why that one even came. Just play Batista's I Walk Alone and do the entire entrance. No fireworks, but just do the entrance. I, I have to practice that today. Good thing we're recording early, by the way. <laughs> I'm giving you time. Giving you time. Oh, sitting in my wallet. Just craziness going on here. Uh, I hope everybody did have a great St. Patrick's Day. I hope you're laying on the couch recovering. You didn't go overboard. You didn't make out with old women from a different country that you don't know uh, <laughs> randomly or anything like that. Still my favorite St. Patrick's Day. I mean, it's top one, and there's nothing close to that. So, <laughs> Not at all. Tales of years past. Anyways, let's... let's... You knew... You had to remember that I was going there. You know what? I hadn't even thought about it today, that it happened. And when you did it, I'm like, oh my god. Because uh, the next day at the office, like, everybody was in rough form. He was not even in form. And then we the de- He was under the desk at one point, Yeah, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and we brought it up to him, and he didn't remember nothing. Hey, you know what? When you're new to the country, you got to celebrate the St. Patty's Day any way you can. Did so. he even know what St. Patrick's Day was before we no. went out? No, <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't grasp the concept, which makes it even better. He enjoyed drinking, though. He did. <laughs> if you're listening, Michael, we love you. We love you. So, again, I'm being good. I have a green hat on. I'm drinking green water. Uh, it's actually iced tea again, my water iced tea. We're going to leave early today, tomorrow, yesterday, whenever you're listening. Um, kind of. Take our time, eat some breakfast, get set up, get excited. I'm really excited, honestly. I, I, I'm downplaying this 
really good that I'm ready to leave now. I am packed and legit ready to go. <laughs> Wife still has to work. The son just went to work. Can we just fast forward so we can get to uh, High Ground Pro Wrestling, New Beginnings, and Mark being essentially the main event there? You know, we're going to get there, but I think we're missing something. First of all, congratulations on still being alive after your incident last Friday night where you tried to drain your bank account all at once. Um, we, thought, we, we, we thought you were going to lose that. <laughs> we thought we were going to have to have an in memoriam uh episode today you know but i'm glad to see you're fine and dandy me page started for mark's <laughs> she laughed she said you're an idiot uh at least it's paid for now uh you're not allowed buying anything until jesus christ walks on earth again so yeah um, so i have to wait till easter <laughs> <laughs> such a bastard <laughs> Just a couple more weeks and it's Easter and I'm good to it's go. All, it's all good. Yeah, a couple more weeks. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> uh. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, oh, crazy week. Had two basketball games, both of them. We were officially done with basketball now as uh, they both lost. Tough yeah. games that they should have won, but nonetheless, we have a little bit of time. We have a little bit of time off. A little time. Where softball starts back up. So I'm excited about this. But yeah, other than that, nothing big. Nothing that big this week. Nice. Very nice. Very, very nice. You? Uh, my week has been an absolute shit show. Just work good. over the top. Yeah, good. <laughs> work was over the top, but I think it's also in part because I decided to take today off and just enjoy it a little bit. You know, just kicking back, relaxing. I got a nice corned beef brisket on cooking right now, soaking in some beer, water. Did you take off because it's St. Patrick's Day? Or oh. I, I know you like the NCAA. Or did you have plans to go do some, it was, some heavy so, drinking? It wasn't plans to go heavy drinking. It was because of the tournament. Legitimately had plans in place. Uh People get COVID and it's kind of like, okay, so we got to back off those plans and can't really do that quickly. So wishing them the best, hope they recover and everything goes well with that. But since that was the case, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to put this brisket on, put it on at 8 a.m. this morning. It's been slow cooking for about eight hours. While we record, it'll go on, just sit there stewing uh, the beer that I put in, the beer bath I put it in, nice Irish red, a little bit of water. I have potatoes in there, some onions, some carrots. I just put in there before we started recording. And I was going to make Rubens out of it, but man, it looks too damn good to turn it into a Reuben. But I'm thinking about, I at least have the sauerkraut. I have some Swiss. So we're going to make this work. It's going to be a very hearty dinner tonight. So I'm kind of excited about that. But just for you? No family? No family? Nobody? I have a four pound brisket just sitting in a slow cooker, cooking up. <laughs> And I'm like, you know what? That's some bitch. Some bitch is getting eaten. Like, I was like, I was bringing it up to the fam, and my mom's like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to do some corned beef hash. I'm not going to do anything crazy. I'm like, all right, well, that's fine for you. Sisters were like, oh, we're just going to stay home. I'm like, perfect. I got four pounds of beef that I'm going to be eating over the next week. So I'm in a great position right now. <laughs> How many? And this isn't knocking you. This isn't anything. How many pounds do you think you could put away today? I, I don't want you to get the meat sweats or anything like that. But, you know, so, once we're done recording, it will essentially be supper time. Yeah. And then you could snack again later on, especially if you're watching Rampage at 11, 11. fucking 5 tonight. Yeah, that's going to be a rough one. That's uh, not gonna happen. Probably. Yes, yeah, definitely not going to happen for me. But what I. I don't think it's going to be pounds. I definitely want, and again, it's up in the air if I go to the Rubens or not, but I was looking forward to two Ruben sandwiches, just with the fixings melted on there. If I don't go that route, probably I would say half to a pound, maybe, I guess, would be my estimates, because I'm not going to sit there and eat a half of. You have maybe, a lot of corned beef. And I have four pounds of corned beef. I mean, right. what do you? it's like. That could be uh, like eight weeks of food. 
I love it. I don't have to meal prep next week. I can just be like, all right, put these couple in here, put these in here. I just have to make the veggies up, do whatever I need for lunches or whatnot. Or I just have food. I just have Rubens for the next week. I might be tired of them, but I only eat them once a year. So You won't actually take a hunk out of it and just... Oh, I definitely will while I'm cooking and all that stuff. Yeah. You got to taste you got to taste the stuff. You got to taste it when it comes out. Because I'm all for the Rubens. I am a yeah. do you have pumpernickel bread or what kind what kind I got, of bread? uh what, rye. 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 Yeah. Okay. That's so, that's Swiss cheese, sauerkraut, got the I'm Thousand all Island. For that. That's the way yeah. that I would steer you for sandwiches. Yeah. But I at one point, maybe, hey, you know, Mark, I got to go to the bathroom. Let's take a break or something. You come back and you have a piece hanging out of your mouth. I'm not judging you. I'm be like, oh, yeah, look at that some bitch. He's got a nice piece of meat in his mouth. See, I would have to pull it out of the juices and then cut it, which I'm not going to be. You like, don't be like, you cut in your crock pot. I could cut my crock pot, but I like I'm going to pull it. I'm going to pull it out and let it rest for a little bit just to kind of let it. Yeah. Do its thing and then soak back up the juices and all that stuff and then cut into it. So the recipe that I was looking at online, I've, the few tips that I picked up, they said about let it rest for about 30 minutes or so and then cut into it and actually start serving it. So it'll happen, but I'm not going to get any during the podcast. And then I'll just tell people, I'll, I'll let you know how much I'm grueling over this piece of this hunk of meat that I take out of there. But yeah, so that's where I'm at right now. Just living the dream. <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm gonna have for supper. Probably, probably yesterday's old pizza. Like, listen, nobody's home, so I, yeah. I, I'm going out of that way. I, I commend you for doing like big boy cooking and stuff when nobody is here. I'm either, I don't know. What well, I this is the first night I'm gonna be home for a while too. <clears throat> but like when nobody's here even months ago i pillage it's like oh do we have vienna sausages for me to eat do we have i will not make a meal because it's just like by the time i get done making it and but they're gonna be home did i make it and it's not that i'm mad that i'm making it for if they're home or not did i make enough for but because if they don't eat it the night that it's made, they're not going to eat it late. Mm. The, I, I am the only leftover machine in this house. Those gotcha. two, if it's not off of this freaking stove or oven or whatever, they ain't eating it. Even if it's a couple hours, they ain't eating it. So why? So that yeah. that's why I have to pillage. Like I'm I'm the poorest man in Ridgeway sometimes. Just oh, I'll eat a. I'll eat a raw ramen. <laughs> Listen, if it's during the week, if it's not quick, I'm not going to eat it. Like, so I have to kind of, if I'm going to do it, do it Sunday prep. Like I do all my lunches. I prep it early anyway, so I can just take that. I'm trying to portion control a little bit. It sucks. I'm not great at it, but I'm trying to do that ahead of time so that when I take it to work in that, it's like, okay, I don't have anything else to kind of fall back on. And I'm being too lazy to walk down to the cafeteria to try to buy something. So I should be fine. But it's like I have to do that for dinners, too. But with this one, I've been just dying for a Reuben. And I'm like, I'm buying a whole fucking thing. Just letting it sit and stew. I thought I was going to have some beverages. I still haven't drank since the beginning of the month. So I'm proud of that. And I wasn't sure what I'd be doing today. And I'm like, you know what would be good to come home to if I do decide to break it? It would have been a nice Reuben sandwich and fry that up and be delicious. I'm not drinking. So the only thing, the only alcohol that's touching these lips are what's been brined and soaked into that. And that's tea. legal. And that's legal. So I'm going to kick back, relax. I'll be drinking my circle later. Right now I'm enjoying a hot lemonade and we're going, we're going to have some fun. Yeah. And watch some basketball. That's oh, and watch, like, yeah. That's... Watch, watch shit hit the fan in basketball since it has already the past two yeah. weeks, over the past day. My bracket, once Princeton beat Arizona, my bracket, <laughs> and not that I had Arizona winning, right, but I had them going a little bit farther to, you know, to the eight, and then, boom, uh, see you later. Just a game that was just on. Xavier almost lost. Uh, not that they're a big pick for me. Listen, I'm going to tell this right now. I have Memphis winning this whole thing. 
Memphis. Yeah, I took a I took a flyer. I took a flyer. Right. Memphis right. over UCLA. I went Bama over Zaga in the two uh, that I will. You fell into the Zag moment, dude. You disappointed you year in and year out. Listen, I will. I am on a Zaga bandwagon that I want them to win so bad, but I did take Alabama to beat them this year, which pained me horribly since I hate Alabama, the everything. university, you know, probably everything, but love you guys in Alabama if you listen to us, but I'm not a big Alabama fan. Actually, in my Yahoo League, I took Houston, Alabama, so I went Cougars on that one, but I couldn't, the Memphis one's an interesting one. I'm kind of surprised by that. I, I just didn't, I, hey, I want chaos and chaos. So I love chaos. I love chaos. If Memphis, ro- if Memphis rolls with this, it means they beat Alabama. Yeah. It does. So, so I can hit the fan. It will definitely hit the van. Uh, you should have seen me during work yesterday because I worked from home. I had the games on the Virginia Furman game. If you guys watch that Aaron pass and then Furman scores the three right after it. I nearly fell out of my chair here. Thank God I wasn't in a meeting because I was fucking losing my shit. <laughs> I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Um that I love the madness. I have to embrace it. So, oh man, I I agree. I really wish EA gets their head out of their ass and they give us a uh, one in college football. But I'm also I'm you know pandering for a college basketball game now too. That I would probably be only buy college basketball once. Yeah, because listen, it you do what you do. With it, and probably college. I hate to say this, it might be the same way. I probably only call it by college football once, too. I'm anticipating I'm going to buy college football once every five years if they keep it going, just to kind of get an update on the teams because they're not going to update teams during that. They'll yeah. update them from year to year, but, yeah, but not, yeah, yeah. nothing, yeah. no DLCs or anything like that. So, yeah, yeah. So, wait, uh, did Michigan State win? Yeah, they just, they just showed it. I'm watching it now. I'm behind you, remember. Oh, yeah, you're behind. All right, I got to shut up. So let me bitch about that for a minute. <laughs> because two things I want to bring up. Uh, 2K came out. I thought about it. I thought about it. I'm like, nah, I'm just... The War Games thing is a nice sell. I don't know if it's a, a big sell. So that's on that's on the back burner. Secondly, YouTube TV is fucking leaving my house. I'm... Uh, it now the seven dollar increase it was the first week that i had it you drop mlb network and yeah. now i get this email first time in 23 fucking years of youtube tv we have to up our wages da, 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 da. <laughs> really <laughs> i've had this a month and you've pissed me off twice <laughs> and they're not getting the mlb back package back no so I'm probably going to FUBU because essentially for the same package that FUBU has, that you get the MLB package, it, I might have to pay a dollar more. Yeah. Listen, it's worth it now because yeah. you're not getting the MLB package back. Baseball season starts in a week and a half for the love of God. And you're up to the same price as FUBU now. Yeah. So the downfall is, I have to tell everybody in this household, hey, this is we're switching shit up again, and this is how we're doing it. <laughs> Why? Well, because. But another downfall is, I don't know if FUBU does TNT. I can't find that on there. You don't have to look for the love of God. Well, no, because I did. I don't think it does, to be honest. I don't well, think they do anything T Turner broadcast EBS or TNT, TNT. Those, TNT and those are the two that I need for all of this. Yeah, have you looked into Hulu to see if that has anything? I have not. I really have just started this this morning when I got that email. Yeah, and and I came home early too. It 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 poured here, literally poured here. We got the route done. I told the boss. My real boss is hunting boars and. Guatemala or someplace this fucking week. <laughs> so the acting manager, I'm like, I'm going home. I'm wet and miserable. And I left. It, this wasn't yeah. waiting for a con for fucking confirmation. <laughs> this was click, click. And I went home. 
<laughs> Everybody's like, what are you doing? Wayne didn't say yes. I'm not asking. I am now telling you. <laughs> I'm fucking so from head to asshole. I'm going home. Came home, took a little siesta. That's when you sent me a text. Hey, I'm off too. Da, 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 da. I'm like, oh, this is going to fucking turn out to be a great day. <laughs> and it has been. Well, hey, you know what? Anyway, I can try to help you out there. Yeah, I do have to look at Hulu, though. No, I do have to do some prep work here in the near future about TV's channels and subscriptions yeah. and such. But I can't go back to cable. I've the cheapest cable is nine thousand dollars a month. I, yeah, it's, not, it's not worth it. Yeah. I mean, it, if this is the main thing in the MLB package is the main thing. Listen, I'm probably going to end up buying the. $150 MLB, you know, where I get all the games, maybe that'll pacify me. But I do love Matt Baskurgeon and yeah. Jody Watney and all those. I love the coverage. We'll see. Are you going to get trapped, though, by blackouts with the uh, yes. package? Well, I okay. don't know because the Pirates don't have a fucking TV channel. So oh, are true. there going to be any blackouts <laughs> this year? Because they don't even have a TV channel. That's a good point. I forgot about that. I, I always get dinged when I'm watching the Tigers. I get dinged anytime um, they play Pittsburgh or Cleveland. Yeah. Because I'm in that network. But yeah. other than that, I mean, whatever. Normally, yeah. when I wa- when they're playing Pittsburgh, we're on the Pittsburgh. That would, the, the Pirates don't have a channel anymore. The Cleveland games have always upset me that I don't get. But, you know, whatever. I get. Yeah. The other 150 games. I'm not that angry. Yeah. So you miss those ones. It's fine. You'll be okay. I'm yeah. A, I'm a big I get that. You're a big boy. Yeah. A big did boy. You, did you have your rebar mitts for though? <laughs> We're not there yet. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Oh, man. Are we going to get there? All right. Are we done? Do we have anything else? To... I don't think we got anything else. The You're alive. We're good. I got beef cooking. I got meat. Yeah, big meaty, big, I get big meaty, big meaty man. logs, big yeah. meaty logs that I'm gonna be slapping on counters here. So, <laughs> no, nobody's watching Rampage tonight, or <laughs> did they last week? I didn't watch it last week. I'm not gonna lie anymore until they say, "Oh my God, Britt Baker and MGF are both coming on Rampage." There's, I think, yeah. Until that happens, I'm not sure I'm watching, and it. <sighs> I can't I'll tell you. I Look, like it, but do you do you want to know what really pisses me off? Do it. The last, and this is all that we're going to talk about: Rampage. And we might not even start with AEW first. I don't know. We haven't had that discussion yet. The last two St. Patrick's Days were epic. Yeah. Epic. The first ever uh, Britain Thunder Lights Out match, and then the Steel Cage match. And it's an open challenge for the TNT title. Hobbs against Ray Fenix. Yeah. Dropping the ball a little bit. Uh, a lot of it. I uh, can't uh, imagine that anything. Night a bit. Nobody's watching it. So here's my question is why didn't they do St. Patrick's Day Slam on Dynamite and Rampage as well? I mean, that's what it was last year. It was the day before St. Patrick's Day. That's yep. how they did it this whole week. Why didn't they do that? I mean, if they would have booked that that way, you had a phenom- You had three title matches. You had the big trios, triple three-way dance match. It would have been epic, but now we're relegated to Rampage at 1130 on a Friday night that you know nobody will be Pick watching. Too much. Nah, yeah. I can't imagine the soul is going to say, man, I can't wait until the end. And it's... I don't know if I'm getting sick, I'm going to be so pissed because I don't need to be sick today, tomorrow. It's when NCAA basketball games are over. It's not, yeah. they're saying 1130 because eh, it's this roundabout. About. If, it could be midnight. It could be 1230. It all depends. If they're going to overtime or the hell, the even the post game shows could run a little yeah, bit longer. They're not going to say, all right, that three, two, one, all right, that game's over. Boom, right the rampage. Right. Nope. No, no. Kenny Smith and these boys that I'm looking at right now, and Charles has to, uh, they have to say their comeuppance about everything yeah, yeah. for the day. 
Yep, yep, exactly. They have to give their opinions. Charles has to make comments about San Antonio women again. And then it's going to be – it's all downhill. I mean, Rampage is probably not starting at 11.45 midnight. Yeah. But they have to tell AEW it's 11.30 because they're contractually obligated to do it on a Friday unless they had a, spec- a previous conversation about it, which they've done in the past, but they didn't do it this time. No. And maybe, uh, so I don't know. But – yeah. If yeah. got nothing, I got nothing either. Are we ready for this? Yeah, we are ready for this. So let's do this first. <laughs> Collar and elbow. Hats, hoodies, tees, all the cool stuff that Al Snow and his hooligans have. Go and buy stuff. Can crushers. All one word is your promo code that'll save you ten percent. That's a that that's a that that's easy. That's easy. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're there. Come yep. start. Start the movement, talk, do whatever. You start the conversations. We always post stuff. Start, 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 talk, talk, talk. Cancrusher69 at gmail.com. If you want to be on the show, reach out to us that way. That's a cool way or slide into all our DMs. Jenks, we can be heard everywhere, right? Yep. Everywhere, anywhere under the sun. You want Spotify? We're there. You think in Google Podcast? Check that. You think in Apple Podcast? Hell yeah. We Apple are everywhere. Jeans. Apple bottom jeans. We got the boots with the fur when we do it. So just show up. We're on any pot podcasting platforms out there. I can't even How talk. How many more bees can you get in your mouth? Big time. We're on the air. That's all I got. All right. <laughs> it didn't even make sense. Did not, not even correlate. But I you said, know, we're going with it. I said peas as in like, um. I heard bees, so I'm having a tough time hearing today. So maybe, <laughs> buh, I heard buh. So maybe I should say tease as in twa, twa. We'll talk about that in a minute when we come back on Cat Crushers. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand, the wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand hey everyone this is shelby waters you're listening to can crushers come hang out with us and let's have some fun welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another can crushers wrestling show it's the second break so why am i bringing it back like that i don't know i don't care i'm not editing. it's our first break too we didn't even have the second break yet fuck me jesus christ we start recording in the afternoon we've lost all track of talking and time and when we sit in the show <laughs> because we're we're li- listen you guys know we're freaking sports minded i'm scratching my eye basketball is on so we're both watching basketball as well because we can't not do six things at one time it's That's not just the way this podcast is it is if not fun got onto that Especially since we started watching SmackDown during segment three. It's, you know, it's no it, fun if it, you don't give it talent. About it the week out. Yeah, and we don't talk about it at all. We just talk about what we see for the first hour in that segment. But, you know, whatever. While well, it's on mute. <laughs> yeah, we didn't even hear any of the promos or anything going on. <laughs> oh, my God, coming. what is he saying? I think he's asking if you want to go to Whataburger. No way, what? Sheets is better than Whataburger. This this is the most professional podcast wrestling podcast you have ever seen put together. <laughs> and High Ground Pro Wrestling is excited <laughs> to have me there tonight. As they should be. As they should be. All right, so let's do AEW because we were we were bantering about them a little bit, saying nobody watches Rampage. And I listen, I don't even look at the numbers for Rampage anymore. I, I can't imagine they're good. And I hate to say that because I'm an AEW mark. I love everything AEW does for the most part. I'm excited to see the backstage AEW show. Yeah. 
there's hints that there's going to be another AEW show on a Saturday, kind of like heat. So I'm thinking maybe they're getting dark or dark elevation off of YouTube and throwing it on someplace. Yeah. To give us an hour. Cool. I'm all for that. <sighs> yeah. But I, I just there's times that you need to hook, line and sinker me. So I think part of the problem with Rampage is the time slot. 10 o'clock on a Friday night. Yes, you're getting it. You would have to get the SmackDown crowd to switch over and get it. But a lot of, listen, we're old men. We're going to bed. Like 10 10 o'clock is pretty damn late for us for the most part. And I think it is for a lot of people. So they're not going to stay on. So they record it and then they put it on at a later time. And I think that's kind of where the problem is. If you don't have something that actually draws people's attention to it, nobody's going to show up. I mean, when I look at the card for last week's Rampage, Sammy Guevara, Action Andretti. That's great. Action Andretti has kind of fallen off. off the the, the momentum's gone since the Jericho win. We hear from Jack Perry. Well, cool, but I can hear from Jack Perry on Wednesday, so why does that entice me, right? Nyla Rose and Riho, first two AEW, AEW Women's Champions. That's a great matchup, but it's also one that I'm not looking for because we haven't seen them in predominant storylines. Riho is making appearances in the Outcast or whatever they're calling themselves storyline, but that's it. Like we need more Riho to get us more involved. The acclaimed, no is names. Outcast? Did they sing Polaroid picture? Shake it like a Polaroid. Yeah. Picture. Hey, yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, that's it. Hey, uh, bombs over Baghdad. Caroline, if you or roses, if you're fancy. Roses. Roses. roses but, yeah. yeah. Sorry. That's my favorite Outcast song. But that no, you're good. Roses. But, I love roses. I do. Roses is a but great. But I can song. also buy myself flowers. So let's not. I, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Hopefully, you get yourself some decent flowers, and they don't smell like shit. Right. But then the other one was to catch that in Vance. Great matchup, but eh, filler match. Right. Kind of like match two, Dynamite would be great. But nothing there is jumping Man. and getting us. And maybe it's because we just got babied when Punk debuted in Chicago. And it's kind of been like, oh, my God, anything can happen. But now we're not doing anything on Rampage. We're just filling a third hour of tapings. And that's disappointing. Right. On a Wednesday night. That on a Wednesday night. That the people wherever at Buffalo or Pittsburgh or blah, 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 are watching, so they're yeah. like, oh, I'm going to call Mark and Can Crushers and say this, this, this happened. In, you know, it, they they watched it in a half an hour. Yeah. So get the fucking ass out of this the arena. Yeah. And we'll fill in the other junk later. That's exactly it. All the promos and shit that comes in at a later date and time, unless it's in front of the crowd live. And Which or mostly not look at not, them on rampage. Yeah, They're all yeah. backstage. They're all backstage. A lot of them are like vignettes or something like that. So there's nothing really to draw the crowd. And honestly, if a promo is drawing you, it's because it's a big name. But outside of that, there's nothing else to draw you there. So I don't. I don't the hoop already broke during the start of the Pitt Iowa State game. So it's delayed. So I can't tell you, man, when cyclones come rolling through there, there's a there's a problem. <sighs> Arena delay. Unbelievable. <laughs> so dynamite. MJF MJF <laughs> Rebar Mitzvah. Um by the way, good for him and that girl. Maybe that's his new girlfriend. By the way. <laughs> She is an independent wrestler as well. That's worked on the show a couple of times. Can't think of her name right now. Good for both of them. I'm glad that happened because I didn't want just the pecs on the cheek. I really yeah. wanted something. Listen, if this is his rebar mitzvah, I wanted something down and dirty from him. You, you got to become a man again. I mean, that's just the way it is at the rebar right. mitzvah. <laughs> I would have been okay if he did that to all four of them because I may, apparently I'm a, Male yeah, uh, all of a sudden, but <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not even going to say what I was going to say, so I'm going to leave that there. But that's he has. This is his, this is his shtick. He did it with his ex fiance now, right? Last year, I think it was 
whatever that celebration was. But yeah, so that's MJF's, MJF's thing. I love the shot at Bret Hart before he's even in the ring, essentially. <laughs> Just <laughs> go fuck yourself, Bret Hart. I, I, you're in Canada. You need you that to. shot. Yeah. Yeah. It's not even, let's not even waste time. Take the yeah. shot. You know it. So you knew the Bret Hart shot was coming. So for MJF, well, let's get that the fuck out of the way so that we can get on with the program because it was coming by somebody. That's all it's needed. Yeah. <sighs> hey, your pillars made it. I <laughs> know. No, there's one more thing first. One okay. More thing before we get to the pillars, because I don't know. I don't know. You can really have a rebar mitzvah at 83. Like, is this? I didn't, I didn't know this was a thing, to be honest. A rebar mitzvah? I no, I didn't either. Yeah. But to then throw this out at us that you have to be 83 to have a rebar mitzvah? 83? <laughs> Do you think 83 is the right age to have a rebar, rebar mitzvah? mitzvah? I don't think so, because I don't know what the fuck he would what's do. What's working? Yeah. What's, what's working? What's doing anything? Yeah. What do you, what's the game? <laughs> I would have thought maybe. If that's a fake number to throw out there. C45 or something. You know, there's a there's middle age. Yeah. Yeah. Something. That, that's what I was thinking. Like middle age. You're having a midlife crisis. So you have to have a rebar mitzvah. So apparently it's 46. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Hope you stayed listening to that, Cal. Oh my God! Wait a minute. Okay, here it is. Under that law, this is a real thing. Under that logic, that the Hebrew Bible, it says a normal lifespan is seventy years. So that at an eighty-three-year-old would be having a second lifetime because your bar mitzvah is at the age of thirteen. Thirteen. So that's why. So it's seventy-year increment. So technically, if anybody ever lives to one hundred and fifty-three, they can have a third bar mitzvah, a trade bar mitzvah. A tree bark mitzvah. I'm trying to rhyme it, but trios, 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 trio, trios mitzvah. Yeah, and you know, hey, maybe a super kick party. Super kick party. Kick party! All right, so yeah, let's just bring this out there. The pillars all do come out. Are we getting a? I don't, this almost makes me want to throw up because I don't want to say it yet. Are we getting a pillars match? Like I don't. I don't think some of the pillars are ready for this match, Darby Allen. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. I was waiting for that. And I don't I, know if Sammy is anymore. I, I, listen, I don't think if any of the, anybody besides MJF is ready for this. Hughes, I don't think we're getting a pillars match today. We're getting, or, we're getting Jack probably, but I don't think we're getting all four of them in a the ring anytime soon. I do, I think that would hurt AEW. I think it would too. You have a long term story built in with the four pillars now, since you're going to make them happen. Listen, I'm the first. I was actually excited that all four came out. I thought this was a, a breath of fresh air to the what we've seen. The talking stick was great. The talking stick was great. The cake stuff was a little predictable, but it was a good. It was a great segment because it was a breath of fresh air to what we have seen in the world title picture. And there's nothing wrong with what we've seen in the world title picture. But it was it kind of almost made it feel like the 60 minute Iron Man match was the closing of the old guard, the door for the old guard. And now the new guard is here to stay. Is the new kids. Is the new kids involved. So we're going to get Jack probably. Maybe we get Jack by double or nothing. And then maybe we start all in is going to be Sammy or like Darby's at full gear, something along those lines. Who knows? But it kind of helps usher in the new wave and say that the young kids are taking over here. I think that's part of the reason why we've seen Paige and we'll get to it. Paige and the BCC continue to fight at it because I think it's still it's almost like that switching of the guard. Yep. Paige isn't the young buck anymore he's just the young buck in that rivalry right so it's an interesting play but i thought it was fr- uh, a breath of fresh god damn it i can't even talk you know what i'm saying brian danielson brian danielson. daniel bryan daniel bryan audio cesaro cesaro, cesaro. miro russo <laughs> all right we got all those up i agree i agree wholeheartedly 
I just don't want a four way match for this title between all of them. And it's not that, listen, I shit on Darby all the time. Don't give that away yet. It it could be something in the making. I'm okay with it, but it needs to be built up. Make them run through all of them. I'm okay with that. Run through all of them first. And that could be a good year long fucking story. And then maybe next year's what the hell is the one coming up? Double or nothing, right? Yeah. All in, all out, up your mom's ass. Double, what, double or nothing, all in, and then. What's the big one in Vegas? Double or nothing. Okay. Yeah. That's because you're betting double or nothing. Yeah. yeah. That's their number one. Let this run amok for a year. Their story is to be told. Ta, 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 to be told. It, but if CM Punk comes back, everything's on pause. Because that, that story is built in, for itself as well. The blow-off can be a four-way match next year. Do not give it to us tomorrow on Rampage or next week when this new show comes out, which is, I don't know, whatever the hell they're going to call it. Don't all access. give this away. Yeah. What are you saying? Well, if you're talking about all access, it's that one. Or are you yeah, talking like the, yeah, the Saturday, the random Saturday one yeah. or whatever? I don't know. What that, Do yeah. not give this away. Because there's money there. That's all I'm saying. Just don't. I want to see it. I will pay for it. Not tomorrow. It's got to build. To be honest, I don't want to even see it next year. I kind of want to let it sit and stew for like three, four years when they're all like those. I get it. All better grizzled vets that have had or sniffed the world title you've built in that one of them has been chasing it the entire time hasn't quite got it yet but maybe all of them have at some capacity then you put it into a four-way and have that one person kind of overcome the odds or some shit like that but it's i I think if you're going to make them your pillars you have to extend it and stay away from the low-hanging fruit of that fatal four-way match because that's a low-hanging fruit right now it really is yeah it it would only hurt you more than it would help you because yes. if, if MJF if this happens tomorrow and MJF doesn't win oof you just killed him and he should leave in 2024 and if it does if it does happen tomorrow and MJF pins even one of them you've just killed the other three pillars because the other three pillars need to be levitated the winner of this match is not MJF and right. you're not going to have your world champion lose this match or get pinned in this match to your point. So where's, where's the line at? What are we going to play here? You have to punt it down the road. Hope MJF comes back next year in the fight for 2024. But yeah. So. But great segment. A great segment. It's essentially what it we're saying. We've loved it statement. all, but this is slow your rolls. <laughs> uh, Hangman in the Dark Order against BCC. Listen, uh, I- I'm glad that Stu Grayson's back. I, I really do-, do like Stu Grayson. Yeah. Did we think anything else was going to happen out of this, though? No, because this was pretty damn predictable the way it was going to break down. It's just, I mean, and with events that transpired later on, well, that's what I'm we're, we're not going to go there. We're, we're not going to go there. But yeah, but to that point. No, I, I'm saying we might as well just grip since this. OK, you want everything to is yeah. trios. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, everything is very much trios now. So. So trios. let's go there because those are they're big things. And then uh, we can come back to it. The main event was a trios match of the elite uh, against the House okay. of Black. JAS, Jericho Appreciation Society. Yeah, the JAS. I I could have told you everybody in the match, but I couldn't think of Jericho Appreciation Society. (sighs) I didn't like the main event. Really? I it was great action, but the House of Black was sleeping way too much. They slept a lot and then they cleaned house at the end. Yeah. it's not, I mean, it, it was, I, I, I love the Jericho and Kenny stuff. I love the Bucks and Sammy. And I, I, lo- I mean, listen, this was a flippy match and cool stuff and everything like that. 
it was a flippy match that Mark liked, and all, like all that happened, and it was it kept my mind busy, and I was like, holy shit, I don't believe they did that. Da, 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 da. I loved it, but the, the House of Black slept a lot. They just weren't in the match enough for me, and it's not because oh, I love them the most of all of this. Yeah, you gave it away once they weren't involved, and then all of a sudden Brody King gets up, he gets beat twice, and then. He does. He can bounce back from a super kick pate. Nobody else can. Boom. He. It's over. This, that, and the other thing, which rolls out to the end of the stuff, and we'll get there. But yeah, the match, I loved it, but I hated it because I wanted more House of Black. I get that, and honestly, thinking, going off of what you just said, and thinking back at it, this was a showcase for Kenny Omega and Jericho in their hometowns. So. Just let like, have a singles match, and we said that's last week. A singles we match. We both would have loved it. Yeah. A singles match, everybody would have loved it. Or let them have a curious match between each other, figure out who the number one contender is for House of Black, instead of throwing House of Black out there just to say, oh, our champions got are on TV and get a big win. Your champions could have just showed up at the end of the main event. But apparently... They just wanted to more or less do the spot at the end of the main event to kind of put that bug in people's ears. So, t- to that point, to that comes, point, yeah, somebody, BCC, somebody returned. Well, two teams yeah, returned, and eventually, yeah, BCC and Page rode out on their sudden, rode out on their horses, fighting. What are we? What are we getting here? It, is this? Because four of them make sense in this, okay? And I'm going to throw this out. The Elite, BCC, throw the Dark Order in, fucking it, essentially take the loss out of all this, and JAS. It leaves your champions out. Mm-hmm. Okay? So what are we fighting over between those four? It seems like Hangman. Because the Elite was best friends with them yeah. right they kicked them out dark order tried to be homeboys with them mm. jericho has respect for him doesn't really want him in the group has tried to get him in the group or any of the group the inner circle he's just been trying to be like hangman's buddy for a while are we yeah. really fighting over hangman adam page is this what we're gonna fight over because the bcc <laughs> just wants to fucking kill him yeah it, it's <laughs> When you put it like that, it's almost like it's Judy Bagwell on a pole match. That's where it's going. I, I see to that point. I don't think it's. I don't know if it's that simplistic. I, I, don't I know, know it's not. Right. It, 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 but it's, it's, it's something all around the trios that I don't understand yet. And the House of Black doesn't fit in this. See, I think they're trying to entangle too many storylines that they want to bring out. They're trying to pull in too many threads. BCC, I don't feel like is anywhere involved in this trio's title now. Maybe in three months, but not now. With Hangman, we're starting to put the seeds in the ground of the elite reunion type thing, where we talked like we saw when Hangman won the title way back when, you know. Um, Matt Jackson gave that little head nod and gave him the reassurance to go do it. And then they had him, they were chasing him for the trios tournament last summer. We play in the JAS. You mentioned Jericho kind of playing off of that, trying to be, tried to recruit him, but now has respect, but they didn't join yada, 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 things of that nature. I think we're playing in the young bucks and page recruitment strategy, which that's, they're going to come together at some point. In the next couple months, and I'm thinking by Forbidden Door, because the way things played out, I'm taking this right back to Juice Robinson last week. Bullet Club flashed on the screen. He attacked Starks, even though Starks isn't involved in this. Something tells me Forbidden Door is Bullet Club versus Elite in some capacity. On so four on four. We also get then. Well, oh, I was gonna say. It, it, does this lead because Adam Cole is essentially going to be back in the mix by Forbidden Door then as well? Yeah. Yep. So it could be five on five. Hell, it could be freaking. Oh, it could be ten on ten. Could be ten on ten. Could be a blood and guts massacre thing going on. But I think that's kind of where they're pulling in. 
maybe it's the JAS versus the Elite at some capacity because we were supposed to get Pinnacle, or not Pinnacle, but the Inner Circle in Elite, Blood and Guts, but then people got injured, things happened. Uh, I think the War Games trademark thing was came, came up, so they had to kind of put the x nay on it for that time being, too. Well, COVID we as well. And COVID, too. Yeah. So then, yeah, valid. That's what it was. It was the COVID pat- aspect of it, but we were supposed to get that. So now I think they're trying to recircle back to Blood and Guts by either pulling in the Bullet Club or making the JES and that, and maybe it's Elite and BCC. But then who's the BCC pulling into this? There's so many threads that have just been pulled or just dangling now that we don't know because they decided to do this run in. And I don't think it has anything to do with the trio's title. I honestly think the trio's title might get lost in the shuffle in all of this. Because. Right. In in this in the whole scheme of things, then because take all of those those four other teams away from the trios championship. <sighs> Who's dark? Who is House of Black now defending against? Ar Fox and Top Flight, Top Flight. again, and the Lucha Bros and I don't know. Pox mm-hmm. gone again. It's so. Abraham <laughs> Nunez is, is whatever his name is. I can't remember. His, Ab- second Ab- base. Like, yeah, I can't think of his last name. But well, that's that's a valid point, Mark. Is who is your other trios teams out of AR Fo- instead of AR Fox? And now I've got top flights. There it is. Top flights name. There's nobody. Or who, are who, we who? waiting for what we suspected? And Possibly. those are going to be your trios champions. Maybe. But in that capacity, would you not think they would put it back on the elite to kind of drive that story forward? Why? The elite can then chase them because they have never gotten their rematch for them. That this that'll loop it back around saying, You assholes, uh, we never got our real one on one rematch from the trios from when the, the House of Black beat us. Now FTR and Punk, we want a shot. That's a fair point. And yeah, you're right. And they would romantic, romanticize this by putting it in all out, at all out in Chicago, where everything's full circle. We go back to the brawl. It's a full year. Yeah, that's a valid point. They'll they'll still brawl throughout the summer. Brawl. With whoever they're going to brawl, brawl with. All. BC, yeah, brawl for all, BCC, whoever the hell it is. Then we come full circle back, and they're going to be cute about it and do it at. And it's going to be a fucking false count anywhere match at. There's hey, going to be FTR. Hey, young, they're going to take the loss yep. in the media room. Exactly. Exactly. FTR, there's going to be that, FTR. Note this if this actually happens somewhere <laughs> in. They're going to do it, they're going to make it happen. And let's all throw this out there. FTR Young Bucks 3 sometime this summer. Oh, yeah. Because this will that'll drive it towards that end. Yeah. It, it'll just loop this all back. So, yeah, that's a good. Yeah, I like. Yeah, that makes sense. Swing back around. Swing it back around. <laughs> the juice promo was really nothing to give two shits about. I didn't care. I turned it out, to be honest. <sighs> Jade against Canadian Open Challenge, Nicole Matthew. You, you listen, we knew somebody was coming out. Well, yeah, I I wasn't sure if it was in the match or, and then they were like Nicole Matthews. I'm like, oh, this poor woman's just here for the, the just match take up itself was five two seconds. minutes. I was gonna say it was at least thirty seconds. Yeah, Tyra, huh? Taya, Taya, Valkyrie. Well, why did I say Tyra? <laughs> I don't Tyra, Tyra Banks wasn't Tyra, Ty, 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 Tara, that's Tara Banks. Tara, I don't know. Yeah, Valkyrie, <laughs> Frankie Monet, whatever you yeah. want to call her. Um, her impact. She's not done with impact yet either, though. Yeah, she's gonna float between both, I guess. Whatever. This this is just stats not healthy yet. Mm-mm. And, and where, I, where does she get lost? It has nothing against her. She's a great wrestler. I've seen her at WrestleCade. Da, 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 da. I just don't think she doesn't fit this mold for me. I don't know. She's not the woman to break the streak. She's not. She's really just kind of there to. I hate to say this. 
extend it, but also kind of fill out the women's division a little bit. I actually wouldn't be surprised if she ended up in ROH by the end of this and became in the feuds for that. I mean, but that's it just seems that she's getting everywhere she goes outside of impact. It's more or less she gets lost in the shuffle with what they're doing or gets a random dog. Listen, she's like her husband. And I don't mean this mean. She's like her husband. She just she'll go to every company, work for a little bit, and then just go back to Impact and call it home. Yeah. You know who her husband is, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Johnny okay. Nitro. Johnny Impact, Johnny Dynamite, Johnny uh, Down Under. It's Johnny Down Under in a couple of days, I think, because he's Johnny wrestling last Pro Wrestling, maybe yes. someday. <laughs> Johnny Lucha Underground. Or is it Johnny Lucha? I don't know what he was called on Lucha Underground, but I know he was there. But... I mean, that's a valid point. She's just there. I'm not excited by it, but to your point, it's stat or it's nothing unless they got a bigger name they're trying to get in here, and I don't know who the hell that would be. There's no bigger name out on the market, out free on the market right now. There's nobody out there. It's stat. There's Mercedes. I mean, she's in New Japan, so I feel like Mercedes. She's she's got pseudo contract there for a couple shows that she's not coming over and let's be honest if she's coming over forbidden door exactly right she's gonna be knocking on forbidden door hopefully against hater because i think that would be fucking phenomenal but we'll have to see what they do and how they pull that trigger well you're right things are getting set up um starks against tony he's ready for everybody i they're just doing a disservice to ricky starks and that's He's back to relegated to this. Yeah, being a bum yeah. again. Uh, Orange against Double J for the international championship. I don't know. Can can I say I'm getting tired of Orange winning like this? Like just being. Is there too much underdog? Maybe, but to me, this was a better match than it should have, and I don't consider it an. Underdog more or less of a he was trying to get screwed out of the title type thing, right? right? I like, but I agree with you. He plays a lot of the underdog a lot, like hey or not Hager, but Big Bill, things of that nature. This one was more or less felt like, oh, you're just getting screwed over time and time again. And could you see through everything that they were trying to pull? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> except for Chuck apparently needing dental surgery today, but that was a different story on that. <laughs> during that, I was like, okay. But, uh, hey, you know what? It was a good match for what it was. It, and it did kind of give the element that J- Double J may pull it out somehow, but he didn't, which was a good thing. And I'm glad Double J is now sticking to putting over young talent I, instead of bearing young talent. But Agreed. Agreed with that. Uh, the acclaim just wanted to sing. Didn't yeah. didn't really give us a message. They just wanted to sing. That's, I mean, you know, hey, sometimes you just gotta let your voice do the talking through song, song and rap. And in the same part, Daddy Mac and Cool Hand Luke are gonna send a message to them on Rampage tonight. So can't wait for that. Two segment call squash. Call me when that's on. <laughs> call me. <laughs> and now we get to the outcasts. First and foremost, um, I'm glad to bring a flannel back. That's that's great. I think we need to pick up this story a little bit faster. And uh, we'll get to the word. Don't worry. I think we need to pick this up a little bit, and I don't know if it's we're going to get that match at double or nothing or whatever the the what the hell do you call it? The five on five match, five, whatever. Yeah. Who's going to go with them? OK, because you just saw Britt in, in Jamie's team, which, yeah. oh, by the way, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they couldn't pull in anybody else. <laughs> Where's why wasn't Sky Blue there? Was Sky? No, Sky Blue was. Sky was. Yeah, she was there. Okay. I don't know. I. I don't know. It's because they they sat on Rio 
for so long. She hasn't been in the picture at all. Willow and Scott. Willow, she had a great street fight, and she at least ties into this. So she fought with Ruby in the street fight. There was a turn there. That makes sense. Sky Blue has just been spray painted a lot. Right. And she is the she is the rookie's rookie in yeah. this. She really has been. Yep. Even though of all of these people, she was in the very first battle royal. Yeah. For for the women. Listen, she was showcased there. Like she's been in AEW since the inception of AEW. <laughs> there was Brit that was signed that was made a big deal. And Sky Blue was like uh what is Mrs. Irrelevant? Yeah. Of the draft pick. She was signed roughly the same time. Where the hell is Sheeta? Sheeta would add a little bit for me than Riho. Mm-hmm. But is Sheeta going to be a turn to go? Because they need they need two more people. But here's where I also will push back on that, and it's Sheeta can't be turning. Because she has been disrespected by Soraya. All of them. And all of them. So you cannot have that turn happen. I honestly think she's going to replace Riho or Sky Blue. I don't think this is the final five. Because. I hope it's Riho. I, I, like, listen, I love your idea, Willow. She's a tough ass fighter. She yeah. deserves to be in there. Sky, this is a storyline for Sky. Yep. So if there's a replacement, it's got to be Riho. Like, yeah. she's in and out of this more than, you know, I changed my underwear. <laughs> yeah. And unless Sheeta, Sheeta can't be injured. I don't think Sheeta's injured. I think she's just doing her own thing in Japan or whatever it is. I don't know what she's doing. But to your point about Ruby, Soraya, and Tony, I have no idea who the hell. Let's switch gears. Who would want to join them? Who would they even... Do they do they reach out to Athena? Since she came in the company as well. Maybe. I mean, she did turn, so that could make sense. Okay, now give me that's the easy <laughs> one. one. Who's the other one? Do they pull Mercedes out of Mothballs, your cousin, and put her in there? Do they do? They're not going to do Taya. She's not going to be a part of a group that's. Kind of pro WWE, but and she was only there for a cup of coffee. Maybe with the dog that didn't do anything. anything. Yeah, I don't know. I like I. If, if we're trying to get the five, four's rough. Five's impossible. And honestly, I feel like it would be the Outcast and two other people. It's not that they're joining the Outcast group. It's they're oh, just yeah. the two people to right. fill out this team. It, it could have been, could they just grab Nyla then because she's a beast? Maybe they pick up Nyla. Hopefully not Marina or Maria or whatever the hell her name is, Shafir, because she's not anywhere close to being ready for blood and guts. I feel like she'd just go off the rails in there. But yeah, I mean, I guess I would keep Athena away from this then too. Just you, your ROH champion. Listen, keep. Well, uh, that's a good story though. Your ROH champion and your AEW women's champion both in the match. Even though they're not front, even though Athena wouldn't be front and center in the group as the lead, that would be a hell of a story to say, okay, our Ring of Honor women's champion versus our AEW women's champion. Yeah. And then Nyla, because she's a beast. And then, and Nyla, Nyla would fit in perfectly because she's a beast. She's going to be a tank in that match. She's going to be that big, that person, that power person in that match. Jamie's the one for Britt's team. Nyla would be the one for Ruby, Tony, and Soraya. If anybody, let me just throw this out there. And it's just because people are like, well, you have this other beast in there that could run. You keep Jade the hell away from this. Oh, Jade's not touching this. By a mile. She doesn't need to be involved in this at all. Especially, yes, agreed. She doesn't need to be in this. And especially if she still has her undefeated streak, you can't put her in a match and have her lose the match. Yeah. It's going to give away your end. So Jade is nowhere touching blood and guts or anything. This is below her, it, if you it, will. Yes. In the terms of her character, this type of conflict is below her. Yeah. She would not see herself get involved in any of this. And rightfully so, that's her character, and that's how it should be. She should be above what's going to transpire in this down-and-dirty fight. Right. 
I'm excited for it. I don't know. Um, and now let's get to the word. Uh, if we get a fine, we do get a fine. We're not going to get a fine because we have explicit. Neck beard stinky twats. <laughs> like, that's what Soraya said. Yeah. And she she has blatantly said that she's not meaning it as, like, female anatomy. Da, da, right. da. It's just, I don't know, apparently a word that she says all the time when she's fired up. Like, me and you say fuck, fuck. or whatever. Or she, <laughs> this, she is, this is just a norm. I mean, I don't I don't know. I've, I've never heard her say it before. But, uh, uh, TNT didn't like it. The Turner Broadcasting Network didn't like it. She legit got a fine. Yada, yada, yada. It is actually one of the seven bad words of George, Tar- of George Carlin. It is. It, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, Soraya's like, that's not what I meant. Did it piss you off, offend you, or anything like that? No. I, By the way, it's see, 19 to 2 pit over Iowa State. After all took, the first. Listen, all it took was a broken rim for them to just dominate. Um, no, it doesn't. But I'm also somebody that grew up not around that particular language, but fuck, damn shit. Trucker. We're on right. cops. Trucker right. language. I'm on cops. I'm watching cops. I'm not on cops, but I'm watching cops I'm on TV lots. You know, so it doesn't bother me, but I get how people would say it, would be offended by it, I guess, because if they keep it very clean and you have young kids in the crowd and you're trying to keep kids away from that language. The other flip side of this is she may not have meant it like that, but the words came out of your mouth and it doesn't matter. It's whatever definition can be aligned to that verbiage. They're going to come after you for it. And if that's they align it to female anatomy and they don't like that. They're going to come right back around and tell you, nope, fuck you, $10,000. Give it give it to me for my pocket. And that's the way it is. I don't know if that's a fine for it, but that's where I assume it would, I would be. I would imagine it's somewhere around that, yeah. that ballpark. Yeah. But, uh, I, again, it was just, it, it didn't bother me. Actually, I read about it before I heard it, and I kind of forgot about it by the time I got to watch Dynamite. And, and when she came out, it kind of you know rekindled this whole thing. And I'm like, oh, now I just wanted to see where she put it. Put you it. know, like yeah. what what was her? And you had to have been listening for it too. Like she, listen, she still has a thick accent. She does. So I'm defending her. Listen, as much as we're shitting on the outcasts about. What the fuck are they doing with her? This, that, and the other. We don't understand. I'm defending her, too. Like, this is just... It's a faux pas. It's a faux pas. It's whatever. Brain fart. It probably wasn't scripted. Hey, go out and say twat tonight. No. Yeah, just not... just calm, calm your jets, people, for the love of God. Do you think they're going to... apologized and she's good to go. go ahead. Yeah, do you think... How many more? How many more offenses we'll call them? Do you think Soraya has before they start saying, maybe we need to talk about what you say before you go out there? I think this one is it. Yeah, I, I really. I think- was thinking that too because it's you're not. She's going to be checked now on what she's saying because a, even before she started all this, some of her stuff it just wasn't landing. Didn't make any sense. It was it was kind of like Roman Reigns' second suffering subcatastrophe or whatever the fuck that was. Right. I don't know why I'm struggling to speak today, but we cannot record early anymore. We we can't. I'm just done. I don't know what's going. On. I had the whole day off, and now the I'm getting with fucking You're talk. It's the meat. It's the Jenks brings the meat. It's Sorry, like fucking Ar- It's like fucking Arby's up in this joint. Um, but anyways, you got it. Yeah, I need a good Arby shake now. Anyways, but it. Um, uh, now I want to go. Know what I want right now, you asshole? Since you said shake, what, what was that? Well, it's St. Patrick's Day. What I should probably shake? go to Wal- Walmart. I should go to Walmart and get him a shamrock shake. Well, we, thanks for listening. We're done. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're, a segment. we're We're done. I will also say Arby's has a great mint shake that's more Andy's mint. Fantastic. They, they are they are forty five minutes away. Where oh yeah, is. yeah. It's we very don't very have cool. everything right around the corner. Sorry. Like some people. Listen, it's a mile away. I have both. So can yeah, beat me up. Even the shamrock shake, I have to go 10 miles to get to where 
Oh, wow. Like, Sheets last year at least had a, a fake mint shake and, that yeah. did it. I could have went there. Ridgeway just has nothing. Nothing that I have to go to St. Mary's to get something like this. And now I really do want a shamrock shake. <laughs> if you guys ever thought you were going to hear Mark make that noise on the fucking podcast, <laughs> Mark, get down on your bingo. I even did the face too. The, he the, did the face, the face. dance. It was it was quite a sight over here. And mark it off your bingo card. But well, uh, I don't even. The point I was trying to make was they're just going to start scripting her promos here. Oh, I, I agree. The, and they, that's that's going to be the sad part. You're going to understand because I don't. She's good enough. She doesn't need scripted, but yeah. she's a trucker that she needs scripted. scripted. Exactly. And she's starting to find her groove in the promos to deliver them, but she start well. She's starting to find her groove in an outcast too. Yeah. Even. The first couple weeks of her being bad. Listen, she was – we're talking about Soraya. Everybody's like, what the hell are they talking about? They went yeah. from Arby's to McDonald's to KFC to Mark being a baby. Listen, we're Walmart. still talking about Soraya. <laughs> um, she was fed Brit, and that was never going to go good. Yeah. Okay. We've come to terms with that. She was ne- it was never going to go good going right after Brit. So that kind of stumbled her – her mojo, but at least they're like, all right, you have to be bad because it doesn't matter if Brit shits on Tony Khan, people are still going to love her. Yeah. So boom, now you you're bad. It took her a couple weeks, even in the outcast, but now you're right. She is getting a hold of this. She is getting also Tony sounding a little bit better, who yeah. I never thought was going to be a good heel. Because I don't think she's a heel ever. I, you know, there's mm, yeah. people that just aren't heels. And I, I don't know if Tony Storm was ever going to be a great heel, but she sounds better. Ruby is perfect. Ruby is, listen, she's an outcast. She's a bitch. She's a runaway. All of that. This is her thing. The other two just needed a minute. And Jenks is like, why are you fucking, nobody else is looking at me. Why are you showing all my hands and everything? It just took so it, those other two enough time to click. Like if yeah. there was practice for these two they should have been in it for a while yeah there's no practice it's out in front of a crowd and yeah. not but to that point is there practice on dark and elevation to kind of have them even though it's not a large crowd even though it's an internet crowd i'm cut a couple promos get get some things under them they make mistakes on youtube it's not getting to twitter it's not getting shared but if they make the mistakes in live tv like they have it's we gonna get shared. Apart. We rip it apart and we look at it. So I think there's that um aspect to it too. All right. We weren't gonna go long on AEW because we were only covering one thing and we have forty five minutes. So we do what we do. Do what we do all the time. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back and we will talk about WWE now here on Can Crushers. Here, here. This is the hardcore icon, Just Incredible, and you're listening to Can Crushers Podcast. Now, that's not just the coolest, and that's not just the best Can Crushers Podcast. Well, that, my friends, is Just Incredible. Welcome back, everybody, to Can Crushers. It is now time for the WWE. That's all I got. And for the WWE segment, Jenks puts his MJF scarf on did the triple b is the i know that's the title but we're gonna go triple b on this why didn't you wear that last segment you know i wanted to be different did pull them for the 2024 race that's all it is oh, okay. <laughs> and i'll ruin it mark is not going anywhere tonight i thought about it during that little 30 second break or whatever and in that 30 second break which is much longer on this end I uh, poured myself a drink to keep my ass home tonight. <laughs> Good job. So it's smart because there's going to be other random drunkos out there on the road. I don't need to go get a milkshake. Yeah. While well, these people, well, let's be honest, it's amateur night in America it's right now. Really? It's, is. it's very, and by this point in time, there is a bunch right. of amateurs are out driving and trying to get home. So before we get into the segment, 
I know everybody, hopefully everybody's driving safe where they're going to. And if they're inebriated, they are actually getting rides. I know you guys have already went through St. Patrick's Day's past it, but I'm going to remind everybody again, be responsible. If you're going to drink heavily out and about, get a ride home, get an Uber, spring for the $20 trip back yeah. home. 20 Don't, bucks saves your life. Don't exactly. be a jackass. Yeah. 20 bucks now is cheaper than let's even be that way. 20 bucks now is cheaper than a DUI fine or whatever that's going to do to your life. Yeah. So be smart that's about it. Minim- Listen, minimum. I, I know some people minimum $10,000. Exactly. That's yep. if you get out of it. Yeah. So be smart. 20 bucks guys. I have a cherry Coke and whipped vodka. I don't know why it just, Two things that I grabbed, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to drink this right now. There's nothing wrong with that. Nice little whipped vodka. Nothing says uh, happy St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day than vodka and whipped cherry coke. <laughs> exactly. So we were enamored last week when it was Jay talking about Roman and all of that in the ring. And when we finally go back and watch it... <sighs> Again, it, it's the bloodline. It carries it carries wrestling. It and I hate to say it because there's really so much other cool stuff, even in AEW on e- Impact. And we need to we need to watch a little bit more Impact. I'm briefly watching it here or there, but we just haven't covered it enough. And maybe soon yeah. enough we will start. But listen, this is on every show. Anything that WWE has is linked to the bloodline. And it is so fucking great. Like I, what was your favorite storyline as a kid? Like mine was Horseman, Magnum, Dusty, throw in the Road Warriors as well, Rock and Roll. Like anything the Horseman was doing, and they all kind of all those faces were linked together. Um, they wanted to beat all their asses. Yeah. Essentially the same storyline we're seeing now, but there's twists and turns of 2023 compared to 1983. Get ready. Bloodline might be better than the Horseman storylines. I can feel the heat right now. (laughs) We have in the past said the Bloodline is better than the Horseman. That's been said. I know, but I mean now, and I, and I was like, well, maybe comparative. Or you've said it, and I'm like maybe. Comparative. I will say it. I I really, and I'm not saying that the wrestling is better than the Horsemen or Dusty and this and that and the other. And people will really get on me about that, but whatever. It's my own opinion there. I I just because no matter what happens. This isn't over WrestleMania night when the mm-hmm. one, two, three hits, Roman Reigns music hits and Cody leaves without a championship. People are still going to be pissed off. Yeah. I now want that more than Cody. And I love Cody. Like, remember the man crush I really had on Sammy? Yeah. Off. Cody's back. That's my man crush now. I want him to have the championship. I don't want him to have it at WrestleMania anymore. Well, and here's let's play let's play a little bit of psychology on that. Why? Because Cody's storyline ends at WrestleMania. He's chasing the belt his family has never gotten. Right now he has it. What's the upside? Yeah, what's now? What do you do, Cody? Yeah, what, what do you do part? now? Go back to AEW. You know? Yeah, you, you carry it for five, six months, get cashed in on it for, by money, money in the bank. Money's in the chase. Yeah, the money's in the chase. There's nothing prolonging it. Roman Reigns, he gets to WrestleMania. He wins that match. Now he's still champion. He's still building the empire. The empire is fire right now. And you have so many elements that are such good storytellers ingrained in. And this is could be why we're feeling the back end of this with a lot of these matches where we're like, there's just stories missing and we don't know what's going to happen. You have all of your primarily good storytellers in one rivalry do it, one rivalry telling the story. Roman Reigns, the bloodline. Jimmy Uso, I'm going to throw out there, is one of the best storytellers in this company right now. He carries this company in some segments. 
Sami Zayn is carrying people in this segment. Kevin Owens is carrying people in segments. Cody Rhodes is carrying segments. You put all of your carriers. You have forgotten Paul Heyman. Who is I've the got Heyman, who's taken a back seat to all of this. Yeah. They have all carried the storyline. They are storyline carriers. Outside of Seth Rollins, there's not a lot of storyline car- carriers in the WWE. And you have them all in one rivalry ingrained. In one story. That's why it's almost like I agree. These 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 storylines are rivaling some of the best in history that have ever come up. But I think to take and play devil's advocate a little bit, it's making the card unbalanced because you have everything in two matches and then everything else. We're getting Brock and Omos. And now I don't even know if we're getting. Yeah, we'll get to that, and I don't even know if we're going to get Bray and Bob anymore, and we'll get to that. But it's like – it's one of those things where it's created such an imbalance between the two, between you the company. You cannot I, – I am now on – you cannot have the tag team titles and Roman and Cody on different cards. Because if if you have the tag team titles on Saturday, yeah. we know that Rody, Rody – Rody and Roman, no, R- Roman and Cody are headlining Sunday night. We know that. Yep. If the Usos would happen to lose the title Saturday in the third match, that might give shit away. Yeah. Like, I, I then think they pull the trigger on all of it. And then, I don't know. But I, like, I don't want any of it to happen anymore. I'm finally going to spend my hundred dollars from Christmas that the dogs, my wife, and the the child have got me for fanatics. I'm late to the game. I'm buying uh, acknowledge me hoodie or something. Like, yeah, you'll at least understand it five years down the line instead of what's up, you're up, I'm up, love, mm-hmm. left, right, right, anything stupid like that. You'll at least understand. Acknowledge me years down the line. line. Yep. And it's not it's not a passing meme phase like right. yes or happy roots of day. Like we could say that to ourselves, but this is transcending the business. This is yeah. people know what that is, and it bring it's going to bring back fond memories. Tell me, tell me before we go any further. You really want Cody to win this title? I can't say that. I mean, I, I do want Cody to win it. I love the story that there's more than one family in professional I mean, like, wrestling. Like, Cody Rhodes or whatever the song, yeah. song goes. Yes. I love it, too. I would love it, honestly. But it's taking a slam. back seat. It's just it can, not. It can wait the SummerSlam, right? It can. He we can, can, we can take. just lose the tag titles. Yeah. But let me be devil's advocate there. When are we getting that happening? Because we're, in my mind, like WWE is killing it right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kudos, Trips. You're killing it because I don't know. Kudos, Sean, too, by the way. I don't know if Roxanne Perez is really hurt or not. I don't know either. Pouring the fuck out of everything. Yeah. They have a, a mark being a mark all over again. Listen, WWE has been killing AEW in, in in the just of things the last two months or so. Yeah. Like, full-fledged. And I don't think we play it up enough. They have been killing it. So, Trips, you're winning. I understand that. You have the marks going crazy. Man. We can just start with the tag titles. But how? I, I'm, I don't even know how we're going to get there. Is, is KO going to be jealous? Next week when Cody and Sammy have to fight Solo and Jimmy. But we're getting a tag team match before WrestleMania, right? Yeah. Yeah, we have to be. Is he is he going to get jealous or is he going to get... It's going to be a three-on-two beatdown and then he shows up to kind of just throw his hat in there to kind of help. Who knows? Who fucking knows? And this is the beauty of it because we played... The, 
I completely last agree. Last time we could predict every fucking thing that was going to happen, and we were right, and we were like, "Bull, this is gonna suck." Yep. And we knew, and along with other podcasts, they knew, and it was just like, "This is gonna be a fucking horrible WrestleMania." It wasn't horrible, but it, it wasn't, wasn't great. Great. <laughs> and now we don't fucking know. And now we're playing. It pisses us off. It pisses us off because we're like, what the fuck is this? What the fuck is going to happen next? And we're sitting here thinking, I could use Roman Reigns for another hundred days, get him to a thousand. I could, yeah. I could do the Bloodline, one of the tag titles. Doesn't close up everything. Doesn't create the magical WrestleMania moments. But yeah, I'm good with it. Doesn't everybody, have to. Everybody's going to be around another year. We could do it yeah. next year. We can play. We can push it off. I love it. So the Fatal Five IC title match. Listen, can we just get to this too? We want a banger after banger after banger. banger. This is just extending it a little bit because because there's no and I hate to say this because I I do like where they're going. I think there's going to be probably one of the matches at WrestleMania that nobody wants to walk away from. There's no meat and potatoes. We know we're getting Drew, Sheamus, and Gunther yeah. at Mania. Stop. Just They should have just said it last week instead of giving us this one week match. Yeah. Because nothing's going to happen. They're just going to get a time limit draw. They're going to beat the snot out of each other. Or we're going to get something else next week to extend it one more week, and it's just too much. Just announce it. We know. Yeah. Announce it and let this just be a pride thing. This match just be a pride match. Yeah. That's all it is. I don't get even momentum. Give you the IC title. Yeah, give momentum for the triple threat at Mania. It's a mania. It's a mania match oh. through and through. So just announce it and let us get there. Let's not fuck around. Let's not Would piss around with it. Would you be angry if one of them actually? And you guys know because it happened. Would you be angry if one of them won and we only get a one on one match? If it's Drew versus yep. Gunther, Thank I'm you. fine. Oh. Oh, I thought you were going to go the other way. Because we saw the banger of... We Sheamus. saw the banger between Sheamus and Gunther, but we, we haven't seen we Drew and Gunther. We do want more of it, but we haven't seen Drew versus Gunther. That would be a banger after banger. But now we're being teased with a triple threat. I'd rather have the triple threat and push Drew and Gunther to SummerSlam. And have that be one of your sub main events. Oh, so you're saying I'm not I'm not saying this is your prediction yet, but right. I'm saying holds the titles. I'm saying it would make more sense if Gunther held onto the titles because a you're putting over a the younger talent in this scenario, but b he looks way more strong. And more powerful and more dominant if he beats both Sheamus and Drew on the grandest stage of them all. Agreed. Agreed. I do think at one point Sheamus does get his IC championship. I do. Okay. But I do think it comes through what you just said. Mm. Maybe Drew beats him. And then Seamus, this is, again, a story yeah. that can go to, I, I want to say, I always, after SummerSlam, you always want to say Survivor Series, but boy, it, it, maybe it'll be built better this year. Yeah. I, these, last year, they took a step in the right direction. Right. But, but it was, was yeah. Right. Yeah. Whatever is right after SummerSlam, uh, Roadblock or whatever, I, maybe that's where Seamus can pull off his IC championship from Drew. Yeah. We'll see. You know what else I'm pitching? We're, we're just looping everything together, by the way. You know what I'm bitching about? Judgment Day has their hands in too much shit. Okay? Yeah. You have Finn and Edge we have to worry about. We have Dom and Very his dad we yeah. have to worry about. And, oh, my God, we're forgetting that Rhea and Flair, because... We know the match has been made. Can they at least, and we'll get to the other two, can they at least cross paths, can say something 
Your match to because listening, Rhea, I, I'm going to predict this now. Rhea, you are winning your championship at WrestleMania. Okay, can we pretend that you care? Because none of this has happened since the day after a Rumble. Like yeah. they don't care about this match. It was booked the day after Rumble. Okay, there it is. They fuck it. They don't need to cross paths until probably the day before. Yeah. Why? Yet this is going to be one of your main event matches. This is going to be your main event Saturday night. Are they just playing up? Rhea just doesn't care about it, and she's just going about her own business in her own way. I I don't know because you would have thought there had been the match right now. No, because there's no story built around it. Yeah, they're trying too hard, I think, to rely on the history between them. So, but the there's is one match. One match that was shouldn't have gone the way it went, but it did. Right. And it was just, eh, okay. It's not a match we talk about. It's a match that we kind of look back on and say, well, that was a waste of two months of story. It, and that's what, that story building was garbage. Yeah, it wasn't anything good. And it basically just was to put over Charlotte again, over the younger talent. Eh, don't really care. So I, I do, it's not your main event saying, anymore. Yeah. Is, is as of right now, you're telling me Rhea's going to win this championship because everybody is saying that. Everybody, Rhea, this is Rhea's championship. Is it? Is it though? Because what do we do with her as champion then? Better yet, how long she have it before it's right back on Flair? Yeah. Are we playing Flair's gone for four months, comes back to SummerSlam, wins the title back, and then... Because who's build back. up for Flair next? No one on SmackDown. And I don't even know if Raw is, because a lot of the ladies that are... That's an intermingled sh- shit show, and I don't mean it mean, but... It's intermingled. There's so many... It's so one-sided. I think we brought this up before. It's so one-sided that the talent's all on Raw for the women's division. In SmackDown, they have the younger talent, but they're not there because there's no veterans to carry them through to the pro- to get them to that higher level. They're all just struggling trying to not up their game. Yeah, they have Natalia and I guess Shayna, but they're not even... Natalia just came back, but even then she wasn't carrying a lot of talent her name value is not there for, to put over that younger talent. It, they need a desperate shakeup of who's oh, no, where do. and what. Yeah. Who goes where and what's going on and just start from the base. And I really am hoping, I think they're just limping into mania with this. And after mania, they're going to be like, we'll figure it out then. And we'll shake it up. And then we'll figure out, we'll reset who the champions are. And they're your cornerstones, and that's who we're going to have everybody chase after. Is it Rhea and Bianca after that? Or is it Rhea and Asuka? I don't know. It probably could be Charlotte again, because I'm pretty sure they're going to want Charlotte to drop the title so they can get her to 16. Yep. That's the only thing yep. Charlotte's doing right now is just getting to 16. So she can have 17 then yeah. by the end of the year. 17, yeah, by the end of the year or whenever she decides to hang it up, which I think is coming sooner rather I than could, later. I really was – that was the next thing. How much longer does Charlotte Flair wrestle? I mean, she's she's only in her 40s. Listen, but she doesn't need to. She doesn't need wrestling. This isn't even her thing. It, she no. has said this for years that she wrestled for Reed Yeah. And David. It, she wrestled because her brothers were wrestling, and Reed's the one that passed, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, his read pass, and this was his thing. Um, yeah, at any point. And then listen, don't forget, she got married last year. Yeah, maybe her and uh Andrade want to have a kid, so that's gonna be building probably pretty soon too. Yep, that's a year off essentially. Yeah, Charlotte Flair's not a lot, not around a lot more. She She's may not. be your Brock Lesnar for for women. She could be. Or she's just going to be done. To your point, this isn't yeah. her passion. They've just been putting titles on her because of the namesake. Yeah. I. Yeah. All right. So 
we get other things. The Hall of Fame. Da, 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 da. So Ray's going into the Hall of Fame. The son's pissed off. Da, 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 da. He doesn't accept the match until Hall of Fame night, right? Is that the way that you're putting it? I think I think so. I think Dom attacks him during the Hall of Fame speech. I yeah. think it's going to be a he's going to ruin the Hall of Fame speech for Ray. Yeah. And that's where it's going to turn in. That's why Ray turns on it. And then it's right. Sunday night. We're going to have the fight. Yeah. yeah. Well, we get Edge. And, and I, again, we're just looping everything together. Monday night, first thing was Edge challenging. Uh, well, the challenge was out there from Finn last week. Edge says yes, but we're going to do it in Hell in a Cell. Both make references to their alter egos. Yep. So, yeah. Again, I don't, you know, there's too much going. You know who I feel bad for? Damien Priest is not going to have a match. Like, he's the one, yeah. you're out yeah. in left Cold. field at Mania. Just don't even come. Yeah. You're just there brooding on the outside. Yeah. I, I'm not excited for. I don't think this is a Hell in a Cell match. I'm sorry, and I don't think it fits their their, their characters. That are gonna they're both one's bringing the demon and one's bringing the brood. It doesn't fit. Neither mm-hmm. one of those characters fit in a Hell in a Cell match. No, it doesn't work. Maybe those. They're, they're professionals. They're going to pull off a great match. Not going to doubt that, but it doesn't work in the parameters of Hell in the Cell. Unless they're going to do some sort of crazy ass shit, I don't think this is going to be. To me, it just doesn't scream it. Doesn't scream Hell in the Cell. Doesn't this scream Blood Feud to write it all off? Doesn't scream any of that. It's just meh. okay. We're going to have two guys going to beat each other and batter each other up just for the sake of having it on the show. Not really there for it. No. Did, no. And I, I would you ever think that Hell in a Cell is a bathroom match? I would never thought it, but I also think having it have its own pay per view is really diminished the value in it I, because you're rushing storylines to get in there, and eh, it's kind of done that for me. If it was to not come back for a year. And then they revisit. Maybe this is it. Maybe it's because I'm just done with the concept right now. If it's gone for two years, comes back next year after it's been on hiatus for a year and a half, and we are doing Edge, Finn Balor in the cell, maybe I'll buy it a little bit more. Maybe I'll be like, oh my God, we haven't seen a cell match in a while. But it's been so watered down and so meh, that it doesn't do anything for me anymore. I agreed. I agreed wholeheartedly. All right. So you brought up and there's other things I want to talk about as well. But these are maybe joke things at the end of this. You brought up uh, we might not be getting Bob and Bray. Yeah. What? What? I I mean, I've read it, but I'm playing, you know. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Why? Why are we not? Apparently not. It's not over. Don't get it wrong. It's, yeah, I mean, Bray is apparently injured, physical injury, or there's creative differences, and they're calling it physical injuries, whatever the case may be. Although I did see a gnarly photo of his hand, and that looked pretty disgusting. That looked, pretty that, looked, that looked pretty gross. But now we don't have that. So now one of your big, super strong meaty guys, men. one of your big meaty men doesn't have a match. What are you going to do? I. You can't force feed. Oh, okay, let's force feed him. Uh... Damien Priest. You know what I really hope happens? I really hope Bob attacks Omos and we get Brock and Bob and they pivot it that way. Omos is taken out for a couple weeks and we revisit Bob and Brock in a no DQ. I'd be all right. Yes, because it be spinning spinning this all back. Right. Because you're in the same loop I am. Did one person, they were in Providence on Monday night, by the way, I do remember this. Did one person give two shits that Brock and Omos were in the ring at the same time? No. Did Brock give two shits? Like, I don't know if this is what, he just looked like he was annoyed that 
he got pushed and he went over. He got pushed and he didn't go over first off. And then he had to get re-pushed and he was like, fuck this. Like, I think Brock is one of the easiest talent for a mark or anybody to read that when he gets pissed, he's truly pissed. Look yeah. when he took a shot to the head. Oh, uh, from Strowman. Yeah. yeah. And then you just need the fuck out of him. Yeah. And then you verbally said, watch what you're doing, motherfucker. Something yeah. like that to him. Brock emotions are on his face. He looked like the payday wasn't even worth what him and almost were going to do. Yeah. And what he, I read is he left Providence is like, fuck this in the clothes and just bailed. Peace the hell out. He was done with it. I, I don't and, blame him. Don't blame him at all. Nobody cares. I mm. mean, Almost wins, and you were like, oh, it's passing a stone or pa- passing a stone, passing the torch. Well, it's going to feel like passing a stone by the time that <laughs> match is over. Right. But nobody cares. Like, no. n- nobody wants to see this. I'd rather see Hornswoggle come and get this. I completely, Hornswoggle, I'd want to see Hornswoggle versus fucking Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar. Yeah. yeah. Nobody wants Omos. He's, maybe, if this is what WWE is trying to do. He needs to go get repackaged or rebuild or this is just not. Listen, you you've pushed him down our face for a while. We don't care. They, to, you're not going to be able to do anything with him. Send him to NXT for a year. Let him just be in the camp working on shit. Because I don't think he's going down there anyways on his free time to work on it. I don't think he's doing anything. No. He's listen. He's a professional wrestler. He's a talent. He's signed by WWE. I am not. I am. He's just not fucking good, in my opinion. If you want to get down to it, he just can not. He does nothing for most of human society. But he might be the sweetest person in the world. I don't know him. I'm just saying. Well, I I like want your more. Idea. I but I. I I do, too. I think it's the perfect way to pivot this and say, you know what? We have to do something. Sorry, Omos. It's got to be this way. You lose. And you lose. Yeah. Bronson Reed crushes Elias. Nobody cares about that either. This was the worst shot on Raw. Bronson Reed's coming out. They pan to, let's look at everybody who's in Providence. <laughs> no, but I, I love Bronson Reed. Again, they're not doing anything with him right. Uh, they're slowly building him up, but nobody cares. You can't just pull him in randomly in a suit, no less, and just say, okay, I'm going to squash you. Yeah. Like, if you're not getting him in front of the crowds more often – then you're then what you're doing you're doing a disservice to him. Yes. Like he can't do anything if you're not gonna put him on cameras. You gotta get him out there. Get him out there, get him wrestling every week so people start building up and think he's a monster. Have him start destroying people. But again Notable people. Yeah. Yeah. Elias isn't notable anymore. Elias is not notable. Notable anymore. The guitar connection's not notable anymore. That's what I'm calling Elias and Boogs right now. Because that's all yeah. they are. I Bronson's just there to be there right now. And I, I guess to that point, if you're going to keep bringing solo onto the show, you can't. And I know that's for the bloodline and all of that. But if you keep bringing solo on the show, you can't have two dominant guys just running through people because people are going to be get bored. Yep. So Bronson gets put on the back burner and only has squash matches every once in a while. I thought I'd never say this. If you want Bronson Reed, have him destroy Braun Strowman. Like, Braun Strowman in my book is done. This Monsters of the Midway thing, nobody cares. No, (laughs) nobody cares about that either. People still think Braun's a monster. He hasn't been a monster. He hasn't been. No, we, yeah, right. But there's still maybe some people that, maybe if Bronson Reed does something to him, 
he'll get looked at. Like we thought his coming out party should have been an elimination chamber. It trickled that way. He didn't get everything he needed. Well, I think to that point, the fallout from Chamber has been the disservice to Bronson Reed. Yes. They didn't stay on top of the momentum that they built off of there. If you stay on the top of the momentum, he's looking yeah, more he and more like off. Most. He After. did. So did he get injured? Did we get – we could have got a vignette for like two weeks and just say <laughs> – just type him back up and say, look at the dominant performance of Bronson Reed one week, the next week be like, Bronson Reed will be back next week on Raw – the squash Elias or whatnot, you had to keep the momentum going because whatever happens in the U.S. title picture, Bronson Reed's inserting himself in at some point. Right. So if you keep the momentum going and let's say Cena wins that, then Bronson, we talked about this being the possibility, Bronson Reed takes title off of whoever wins that match, Cena, whatnot. Then you're off to the races. It's believable. It's something that's built up. But now they've taken that away because they just haven't done anything with Bronson. They just signed the guy who Triple H really liked. Here you go. Yep. Yeah, here's a paycheck, but we're not going to do anything to follow up on it. Agreed. Um, that's essentially all I got for realism on WWE. <laughs> Wait, wait, what do you mean? Realism, you're going to leave out Otis? Well, no, that's... <laughs> but I fucking love that. I, and I'm not knocking Bianca against Chelsea. We all yeah. knew what was going to happen there. Um, yeah. Right. Uh, even Oscar coming out and almost vomiting her spit on herself and Bianca. Whatever. All I care about all of this is that Mella and Chelsea are still together. And if they are not the ones that get the tag team championships, I'm going to be pissed. They're yeah. more of a team than Ronda and Shayna are even right now. Yep. So. And there's and, rumors. Now there, there's rumors going on that there's apparently going to be two fatal four way tag matches that are brought forth at Mania. Right. So if that women's one isn't including Chelsea and Carmella in after the titles, then what are we doing with it? Right. I hate to say this, release them both and let them go, because th my big bitch is here. I hate this Chelsea. And it's not because of the character. I love the character. It's the disservice they're doing to Chelsea that she can't wrestle. Chelsea Green yeah. is an awesome wrestler. They're making her look like a buffoon that, you know, she's the Karen. And I love the Karen aspect of it, that she's entitled bitch, crossity use the T word that Soraya said, all of that. I love that part of it. But Chelsea Green can fucking wrestle. And she's not allowed to wrestle right now. She's being made look like an idiot. Yeah. They've done that shtick with Carmella as well in the past, where Mella's a good wrestler. They didn't allow her to wrestle. Hopefully when they become a tag team and they're, I don't know, whatever their team name is, but it's going to be something awesome, I imagine. They allow them to wrestle and whatever. But on the Otis, please don't shave him. That's all I I, I, I agree. They can't. They No shaving. I do Leave want him, him with a little bit. I mean, not that the Speedos are. I, if we're going to do this overall, you know, redo of Otis, I want something more. I, this fucker needs uh, fur he, or something. He needs fur, needs more baby oil, and he just needs to fucking glisten when he's in front of a fucking camera. That's what he needs. That is exactly what he needs. If his fucker's glistening, Otis is the greatest character they've passed. Straight Chippen Chippendale dancer Chris Farley. Farley. If they're not building this whole character off of the Saturday Night Live Chris Farley character. They're missing out. They are. Missing out. There's money for idiots like this. Me and you, <laughs> yeah. everybody else like SNL back in that day. We would, I would go buy an OT shirt. If he is posing like Chris Farley did, you know that, you know <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, the dance and everything. Yeah. yeah. See, if he is posing like that on a shirt and it says OT, he could fucking have cologne. And I'm like, Kelly, I found my new cologne. It is called OT. <laughs> Listen, I hated him as Otis and Tucker. 
I despised him as the guy that won the money in the bank. I didn't like him with Gable as much. He's found his thing now. Run with him. Make this fat motherfucker the best male model out there. And then there's built-in shit. Like, he could... Him and... What is her name? Maxine. Maxine. Yeah. Him and Maxine could have a little thing going on that maybe Mansois or Mace gets jealous and then they fight. There's so much shit you can do with OTs. Let me throw this out there. Now... Did you ever think that the Mandy Rose thing would make this so believable? Because would you have thought, coming out of your mouth, Otis having a love affair or a secret love thing with Maxine, another beautiful woman, would be possible without the whole Mandy Rose thing at the beginning of the pandemic? No. See? So now that's paying off because it's believable now. He's like, oh, my God, he's got another one. So now what's this charm? Rose back, you get pissed off? at maxine maxine and then they start fighting there's so many threads here but now it's believable otis just has a charm that attracts these beautiful women to be in his arms oh this is a rock star not that he's a rock star let not like he's built listen he's built like a boulder and he's starring right now that's all it is he's otis is a rock star you're right he is I, i this is his thing this is really his thing it is and I hate it because now I just I want to be around Otis. Everybody does. What else do you have? Oh, we did. Apparently, Trish Stratus is hurt, and I. This is again. You know how I'm feeling about this whole match. Trish Stratus is uh, is hurt. I don't know if it's real or fake. And listen, it. it this is probably the match at WrestleMania that I really don't care about. Yep. I, Damage control, Lita, Becky, and Trish. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, just get the titles off of Lita and Becky. I, you know what? Maybe well, here's the thing. We don't know who what's what anymore with injuries or storylines or how things are going. Cape Fabe's back in WWE, right? Right. Maybe we're getting the wool pull over our eyes, and this is a Trish Stratus turn of some sort. And they're just going to find somebody to put into the match. They can protect Lita, but get a current talent to put into the match for Becky and them to kind of help carry it. Yeah, and then both have of them the turn. Help. Yeah, they do. There's Becky can only do so much in that scenario. So let's get let's get some other talent in there. Whoever it's going to be, whoever's not doing anything that day. Find Alexa or something like that. Plug him in. And then you can have the turn. Alexa's on timeout herself. That's true. Yeah, she's on hiatus or whatever whatever it is. But just find somebody to plug and play. And maybe that's the angle they're playing here. And Trish turns on them at Mania. I don't know. But throwing it out there. Did that do anything for you, Trish, being with damage control? I mean, um... I think if they... I think it would be what's the aftermath of this? What happens after this? Trish and Lita leaving forever would hopefully be my aftermath. <laughs> that sounds like a giant douchebag move, but yeah, I get it. I don't know. I'm trying to make sense of it. It hasn't panned out, and I just want Trish and Lita to kind of ride off into the sunset and be done with it. Yeah. Love you as legends. Love you coming in as doing your spots and all that for like legends appearances and whatnot, but nothing. You don't need titles. No, you don't need titles. You don't need to carry. The man, any the, and I'm, now I'm going at Becky. The man never needed a tag team titles. Like not. I know she's long in her career. She's got just as many years as maybe Charlotte. Da, 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 but she's the man. Yeah. Why would the man care about a tag team title at this point in a career? But I think it's the same mentality as Stone Cold becoming tag team champion nine times in 97. Right. DTA, don't trust anybody. Right. He's a right. lone wolf. But it, it, you know what I mean? It's I'm not calling it before anybody puts two and yeah, two together and, makes going to
they didn't really need tag titles. It was just to put titles on Austin, fuel storylines. I don't know what storyline they're trying to fuel here because I think this is Becky Bailey should have been the two matches that end in hell in the cell. And we're not getting that. So I don't think we get an end to that at all. Well, I think they just go their separate ways after mania and that's it. Yeah. Which is wouldn't be a bad thing if we're going to revisit it and put it through hell in the cell. But who knows if we're going to ever revisit this rivalry again. Uh, I doubt it. I doubt it too. (sighs) Listen, you still have some time to get to Mayfield, by the way, if you're listening to this early in the morning on Saturday. (laughs) Mayfield, Pennsylvania. Good driving. Close to Scranton. High ground for wrestling. You're going to see me there. And wrestlers. Nathaniel Cunningham and Shelby Waters and Donnie Bambino and the likes of that. I'm glad you're putting the talent over instead of just talking up your appearance there. <laughs> right. Uh, the talent will be on the show in the near future and everything. I'm always on the show. But, yeah, if you have a chance and you're in and around the area, you can make a drive today as you're listening to this. Hopefully you're listening to it as you're driving to Mayfield slash Scranton area. I'm saying Scranton so everybody has a, a gist. General of, location. Yeah. Type in the Falcon's Nest on – you know what? I have the address. I have the address, and I will gladly give it to you. It is 403 Hudson Street, Mayfield, Pennsylvania, 18433. Doors open at 6, bell time at 730. You know – uh, 25 bucks at the door for ringside reserved and 20 bucks general mission. So get there. You'll see me. You'll see the talent again on the poster. The T.O.P. is there. Val Vermin, Shelby Waters, Donnie Bambino, Nathaniel Cunningham that was on the show this past Wednesday. Yeah. Get out. Support it. I'm excited. Listen, now, now I'm ready. I'm ready again. Uh, um, the juices He's are flowing. I'm excited to to do this. And uh, yeah. What, hey, hey, Jenks. Let me say this. Well, yeah. I, can't, I can't yet. <laughs> what a tease. Listen, I can say it. Screw it. Unless something drastic happens, and then good lord. But one of my one of my predictions has come true. How many of your predictions have come true from the crushies this year? Oh, even though I hedged it. <laughs> Still. I'm up one nothing. Minimum, I'm up one nothing. The world's smallest celebration parade is just going to come through your town tomorrow da, when you're not there. Da, 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 da. When I'm not home? You're <laughs> when an you're asshole. not home. <laughs> I said tomorrow. <laughs> We'll wait till Monday at least. I can at least <laughs> wave the people on the back of the garbage truck again, can I? No, we can't do that. We can't uh, jeopardize public safety that way. <sighs> no shit. I don't even <laughs> want to hear that. <laughs> All right, guys. Like, we got nothing else. Mark just scrambling for minutes. Uh, I love you guys. I love you, Jenks. Enjoy your meat, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy my uh, <laughs> slow-cooked meat log here. You enjoy a hey, Enjoy... <laughs> Editing. Thanks. Editing. No, <laughs> oh, I was gonna say enjoy enjoy the show tomorrow night. High hopes. Wish you luck. Also, don't screw anybody over. Let's not let's not interject yourself into storylines here. I. You better talk to my wife. You like, need to take the know, higher ground. Are you ground. doing anything? Are you doing anything with your your girlfriend tomorrow? I am. Well, plans have changed during our show, but I am doing things doing something with the girlfriend tomorrow. What that is now, I don't know, but but yeah. Okay. Well, you have numbers at least. Um, maybe if anything big happens, I'll make Kelly send you a picture or anything. Okay. Or if or if I'm laid out because I moxleyed myself in the middle of a match that I probably shouldn't be moxleying myself. Yeah. We'll we'll see. We'll just. <laughs> 
the girlfriend's oh, like, what? So, why? Why are you getting texts from Miss Kelly? Like, why? Why? Yeah. Mark why is just this... split his head open for no apparent reason? Uh, Mark has a fork hanging out of his head right now. I don't know what's going on. I thought he was a ring announcer yeah. commentator. He is. He is. There must have been a fork in that microphone, or he pissed somebody off. <laughs> Remember, guys, just because I'm trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. You're no, you're a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Make sure you tell your loved ones that you love them. Because you never know. Yay! <laughs>